Hey there, it's Joseph Limo, your real estate broker and professor here in Southern California. On today's mastermind, we dove really deep into open houses and how to hold them on the highest level. Our guest today is Mr. John Reyes of Social Networks. This guy is an absolute killer at an open house. So to understand his tactics, strategies, scripting, we went into all things that really help people to do one thing at an open house as an agent and that is to convert those people into clients. So I hope you enjoy this Monday Mastermind. This is something we do every single Monday, 10 a.m. Pacific time. You guys are always welcome to join live, take notes, grab out a pen and paper and get ready because John brings a fire. Enjoy. And I did have a very successful open house this weekend. And I will tell you, traffic wasn't through the roof, but definitely consistent without a doubt. On uh, yesterday's, after yesterday's open house, it was a four hour open house. I did get home and make sure that my wife was well aware that I was able to sit down for maybe 30 minutes max. Actually, I think that's probably stretching it just because if one party was in, as soon as they'd walk out, another one walking in. And so I will tell you that I am a really big believer that not all of us play this game the same. And I think that that's true for anything. And I mean, Joseph can he can validate that it's like when me and Joe play golf, you know, we don't play the same, right? Uh, Joe runs off with the win and I'm so always there chasing him. That's actually not true guys. It's completely the opposite way around. But when it comes to the game of real estate, I mean, there's really no difference. You're going to have certain people that do things a little bit more strategic, better than others and vice versa. So I just think it's important really for us to be able to learn from each other. But with what James was talking about, about multiple offers in on a property, completely agree with you there, James. And at the same time, for Diane, you're talking about not being able to get an FHA offer accepted. You guys are out there submitting lots of offers. There's a couple of key things that we're going to discuss and go over today. So, Joe, you could see my slide deck, correct? Yes, sir. It looks good. Cool. And I mean, this is an attention getter, right? Talk about a header. Seven hours, $40,000 in revenue opportunities. That's from this weekend's open house. I had a baby shower for one of my family members on Saturday. So I did a three open, a three hour open house and then four hour open house yesterday. Not all open houses are created equally. Not all real estate agents operate equally as well. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to walk you through the process right now. I will say, and I know that Joseph would agree with this. Open houses are going to be gold right now. They are going to be gold for you if you know how to work them. You cannot be an agent that just holds an open house. I don't care how many signs you put out. I don't care what online traffic you promote. If you don't know how to convert at your open house, you might as well stay home. At least that's what I think. Be efficient with your time and make sure that every person that comes through those doors, if they're a prospect, you should be fighting for this business. You have to remember what industry we are in. We are in an eat what you kill type business. If you don't go on out and uh, hook it, and if you don't establish that stickiness factor to make these people want to stay with you, it's going to be a tough road. So walking you through the process of the open house. Step one, you got to want to make sure you got to make sure that you are setting the tone. And so here's what I do. When I go to the open house, I make sure that if the house is stuffy, I'm going to open up the windows. I need to air it out. I have a vacant property right now, as an example, in the city of Ontario that I am selling. And the family has lived there for the last 60 years. There's no upgrades in this home. So this home is a home that if anybody buys it, they're going to be upgrading it for sure. So I went, made sure that the windows are all opened up. We as a team, my wife and I went and actually cleaned the property. And the, the seller was like, don't even worry about it, John. These people who buy this, they know it's an, it's an as-is property. They know that, that they're getting a discount in comparison to the other properties because they're going to have to fix it up. Don't worry about cleaning it. I mean, my wife was there scrubbing the toilets while I was there vacuuming, doing everything just to get the property show ready because we were on such a short time crunch and I wanted to hit the ground running this weekend. So with that said, everything looked good. Countertops are clean, all of that. I get in, I turn on all the lights. Air conditioning works. I make sure that the air conditioning is on. And the other thing that I do is I establish the mood. I have music going. I don't like people walking into an open house and it feeling like they're walking into a library where then they start whispering to each other. I just think that's not a really good feel good. So on uh, Saturday's open house, I think I was playing Bad Bunny and then I switched it on over to Frank Sinatra. And then on Sunday's open house, I was just playing Frankie Valley in the Four Seasons because I just went to his concert a couple weeks ago. And that was actually a really good tune. People are coming in and it was a really good vibe. 
Second thing is you gotta make sure that you're prepared. I had my flyers already created, already printed. I had my signs out. And my thought is that you just wanna make it where you're set up as professionally as possible. Now, normally I have people sign into my open house. This open house, I did not have people sign into my open house, more so just because I didn't want to go through the steps. I was thinking I'm gonna focus just on converting the people that I know I wanna convert and the ones that wanna be converted. That's what my thought process was. So I had flyers, I had my business cards, people come on in. I make sure I'm looking out through the window. So sometimes I might you know, be sitting down in between open houses, but usually I'm looking out that window so I could be the one that's greeting them at the door. I'm opening up the door when they're walking in and this door would not stay closed and I had no door opener thing. Otherwise I would have kept the door open. But when people were coming in, I open up the door for them. Hey, welcome. Thank you so much for coming on into my open house today. I'm setting that tone, making them feel a sense of comfort. And so then I say, welcome guys, come on in. And then I smile because again, this is all greetings. I was just watching this video and it was a top trainer from like one of the biggest hotel chains ever. And he's talking to a business owner. If you guys ever watch Hotel Hell with Gordon Ramsay, it's where he goes on out and he'll stay at inns and hotels that are owned by mom and pop shops. And then he does evaluations on them. Well, this is the one where he brought in, you know what it was? It was the CEO of Caesars Entertainment which is really cool. So the guy was like, greetings are everything. You have to be the first one to speak. When somebody walks in, you greet them. You don't wait for them to greet you. And then also smile. They can hear the inflections in your voice. And I'm like, you know what? All of this makes total sense. So I make sure that I welcome people. And then I ask them the question, so how did you guys find today's open house? Because I also want to know where my marketing dollars are working. I take the time to do professional photos. I do a video tour. I run Facebook advertisements. I have signs that are out. So I want to see what's driving the most traffic. And it's usually a back and forth in between Zillow as well as Redfin. I did have two people that showed up from signs. And I will tell you that one of those groups that showed up just from driving by has turned into a really good lead for me as well. Okay, so now I give the person a flyer. I point out a couple things about the property. So like in this property, again, it's 60 years old. I said, this is a three bedroom, two bathroom home. I'm very familiar with this property. This property has not been on the market for uh, 60 years, at least because the family owned it for 60 years. I'll tell you the key thing about this property, the one thing that everybody loves is the lot size. The lot size is just under 10,000 square feet. And when I'm giving them the message, I'm telling them just like that. I want these people to be excited about the property. And so then feel free to look around. If you guys have any questions, that's what I'm here for. Perfect. Okay, great. So now people are done touring the home. It's a small home, 1,500 square feet. And so now they're going to be walking by me in some capacity because I have one entrance, one exit. The exit is through the front door. So now they got to walk by me. And then I ask them this question. I say, so uh, what do you guys think? You guys ready to pack your bags and move on in? And then when I ask this question, this is really meant to be an icebreaker. I don't care if they don't like the house. I honestly don't care. If they don't like the house, it's fine. I'm going to find a buyer for the property. I'm not worried about that in this market. If your home is priced well, you'll find a buyer. More so, every question that I'm asking has a specific intent. I think that that's the key thing is that I'm not just having a conversation like, oh, how's your day? So how's the showings going? We need to make sure that we have a purpose with every word that comes out of our mouth because we need to make sure that we speak and operate like professionals. And so I say, so what do you guys think? You guys ready to pack your bags and move on in? So I had one guy that's like, oh, yeah, you know, um, uh, this is a very nice house, very nice community. But the problem is, is that this home is just going to require a little bit too much work for us. I had another couple. I said, so what do you guys think? Ready to pack your bags and move on in? The guy says, I love this house. And I love the lot size. Here's the problem. My wife and I work from home. We're short one bedroom. I thought I could make it work, but we're short one bedroom. We, we, we need one more bedroom. And so, again, the reason I ask this is because I just want to get some sort of a response back. Next question that I ask them is I say, so this guy that says, oh, I'm short one bedroom. I said, okay, well, now, is it just this area here? And I talk with my hands a lot. Okay. So I'm like, is it just this area here in the city of Ontario? Or are there any other surrounding communities or cities that you're open to? Now, when I'm giving you my line of questioning, here's what I would do with you if I were you. If you're already crushing open houses, take a little bit of what I'm teaching you and just incorporate it into what you're doing. Because if it's already working, what you're doing, 
then you want to continue what you're doing. Just reinforce it. If you guys are not walking away with numbers and commitments at open houses, if I were you, I would follow my line of questioning to the T. I would even word it the way that I word it. I would even pause when I'm pausing. I would add the inflections when I'm adding the inflections because there's an old rule in business. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Okay. And that's why I say often that this business, this industry, real estate is a very simple business. It's not easy, but it's simple. So now when I'm saying now, is it just this area? I'm not robotic. Now, is it just this area in Ontario that you're interested in? Or are there any other surrounding communities or cities that you're open to, right? I'm not robotic in my approach. So even when I'm speaking, the natural pausing, the inflections in my voice, this is all part of my plan. I don't know if you guys saw, there's a video where the Google Assistant is scheduling a haircut for their person. And they're actually speaking, the AI is speaking to the person that's doing the haircut. So the Google Assistant even adds in a, mm-hmm. And uh, yes, yeah, so I'm looking to schedule a, uh, like those, those things just to make it more human-like. It's kind of weird. Okay, so now I say, now is it just this area in Ontario that you're interested in? Or are there any other surrounding communities or cities that you're open to? Remember, we're asking qualifying questions. So I get a whole different line of answers. So like one person is like, you know what? We actually were interested in Chino. We just submitted an offer in Chino, but unfortunately we were beat out. That's unfortunate. Or somebody's like, actually, Ontario is really the area that I'm looking for. And then they'll tell me that I heard that I can get a better bank for my buck in the city of Ontario. Everything that these people ask or answer, you want to make sure that you're listening to for sure. Now I said, now, Besides this home, are there any other properties that have caught your attention? And if they say, well, there's another home that we just saw last week, then, or even if they don't say, actually, this is the only home, it doesn't matter. I say, what was it about this home and any others, right? What was it about this home and the property that you saw last week that caught your attention? And then that's when they'll tell you the things that are important, things like price. Maybe it's the fact that it's a single story. Maybe it's the fact that it just has a large lot size. But I'm asking these questions because I want to make sure that I'm getting closer to the hook. Now, I'm showing you guys, this is my money slide because this is a money question. I say this is the six-figure question at an open house. I tell them this. Now, if you were to find the ideal place, the ideal home at the ideal price, well, what's your time frame to make a move? And then if they give you an answer, for example, one of my clients said yesterday, oh, we're, we're ready to move now. Or somebody's like, yeah, actually, we would have moved a month ago if we would have been able to get that home in Chino. It, whatever it is that they're saying, I'm establishing time frame. But this is such a key question because I'm really looking for the people that are hot, the people that want to make a move right now. Because I'm, as soon as they do that, then what I say is this you know what I'd love to do? I'd love to shoot you over a text. A text that includes a breakdown of what my team and I can do in order to help you buy in today's ever-changing market. So it includes a, when I say includes a breakdown, it includes a video that has a breakdown. Now, the reason I didn't put video in this text is because of this. I actually had the word video. I want to send over a video that gives you a breakdown of what my team does, because I don't know how many of you guys have videos. So if you don't have a video, you're not going to know what I'm talking about. But what I'm referring to specifically is that every one of you should have a short video where you're recording yourself just like this. Record it right off of your iPad. Record it right off of your cell phone where you're introducing yourself. If you're watching this video, chances are we met in person or over the phone and you're thinking about buying or selling real estate. Hi, my name is John Reyes with Move Fast, Move Now, and I'm a real estate agent in Southern California. Now, my team and I, we leverage the latest in digital technology, social media, and video marketing in order to improve the overall buying and selling experience for each and every one of our clients. So if you're interested in buying a home or selling real estate, I'd love the opportunity to talk to you. Give me a call. Something that can be so simple. Now that video message was probably 30 seconds. The reason that I want to be able to have a video message in this capacity is because what I'm doing next is I told this person, you know what I'd love to do is I'd love to shoot you on over a video, right? A video that gives you a breakdown of what my team and I do to be able to help you buy and sell in today's ever-changing market. And then what I would do is I would grab my phone 
and I would say, what's the best number to text you at? And then I look right at my phone and lean into the client. And that is a key line. What is the best number to text you at? Look at your phone. So if you say, well, what's your cell phone number? And then you're telling Joe, this doesn't work. It's because you're not doing it right. I don't ever ask people for their cell number because that's a little too invasive, but to text them is okay. Kind of funny how phraseology and semantics make such a difference. What's the best number to text you at? And then what I do is I look at my phone and I don't make any eye contact with the prospect whatsoever. So you wanna make sure that you're texting them a video intro and text them your business card. Text them something that's going to help you stand out from the competition. Okay, so let me just show you a couple of messages that I did this weekend. I met a couple. This is a couple that said, oh, this home is probably gonna just cost a little bit too much, a little bit more than what we want. And then I had, when, when they said that, I was fine, what's your time frame to make a move? And they said, oh man, we would like to buy a house right away. You know what I'd love to do? I'd love to shoot you on over a text. In my text, I'm gonna include a breakdown as to what my team and I do to be able to help our clients buy and sell real estate in today's ever-changing market. If you like what you see or if you're impressed by it, simply send me a text back or give me a call. What's the best number to text you at? Now I got the number. Now I got the number for Anna. And then I look at the gentleman and I said, sir, would you like to be included on the text as well? He's like, you know what? Just deal with her. She's like, I'm the one that coordinates everything anyways. So I sent them a message. Anna, it was a pleasure meeting you and Frank today. Let me know if the two of you would like to take advantage of a free home buyer's consultation. Now, the reason is because when you start doing these types of things, you're going to add a little bit more here. You're going to add a little bit more there. And I am very comfortable in my conversations with clients. So the one thing that I learned is that they have been working with another real estate agent. And when somebody says they've been working with, I don't make an assumption as to what degree. I don't know what that means. What does that mean? That they met somebody at an open house and they put them on a drip system? Well, this is an open game business for all of us until somebody has a buyer's agreement signed. That's my thought. So when I had asked them, I said, you guys are first time home buyers. Let me ask you, as a first time home buyer, how, again, these are all additional questions. This is kind of like the advanced training, right? But these are all things you guys can do because you're familiar enough with your business and conversations with your clients. But every word that comes out of my mouth has an intent and I want to drive that person towards me. So I said, as first time home buyers, how comfortable are you with the process of buying? How familiar are you with the steps as to what's involved in purchasing a home? And they said, Oh, you know, there's just so much. I mean, it's just a little bit overwhelming. I love those responses because what I'm doing is establishing a need that they need me to come on in and to be able to assist. And in my conversation with them, I actually said, you know, one of the things that I would highly advise that you do is this. I would highly advise that you take me up on the offer of allowing me the, the chance to provide you a complimentary home buyers consultation. Now, let me just explain to you what a home buyer's consultation is, because I'm not going to assume that they know. A home buyer's consultation is where we meet in person at my office. My office is right here in Rancho Cucamonga. I'm off of Haven and Arrow. Now, I learned something a long time ago, that the more that something is real to a person, the better connection that you'll have with them, the greater affinity that they'll have for what you're saying. So when if I just say in general, we can meet, well, that's a little too general. We can meet at my office. Well, that's good, but I want to be a little bit more specific. We can meet at my office in the city of Rancho off of Haven and Arrow. In their mind, they're starting to visualize where that's at. It becomes more real to them. And so then I said, or if you like, we can meet over a Zoom. It doesn't matter. To me, it doesn't matter at all. But the whole purpose is where you and I connect. We have a meeting and I spend about 10, maybe 15 minutes where I'm simply just walking you through the steps as to what's involved in buying a home from start to finish, from beginning to end. We will discuss and I'll break things down to you like costs that's associated with buying a home. Sometimes people don't understand and realize that there is an out-of-pocket expense. For example, if you were to submit an offer on this home, you are going to want to make sure that you understand the condition of this home. What's wrong with it? Are there any things that are going to be big ticket items for you to fix. And that would require for you to hire a home inspector. So that's an example of what I'm referring to. The husband and wife are looking at each other like, oh yeah, yeah, that's actually sounds really, really good. And then I said, also, we can discuss financing just to make sure you have a clear picture, things like contingencies. So I went a little bit more in detail and they're like, that's awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you doing that. And then I asked them about their budget. 
they were shopping for a home. They were at a home that was about $75,000 above their budget. Now, I don't fault them for that because they were just driving around. They just happened to see my signs. And so they just stopped by the open house. They didn't know what the house was going to be listed for. But what I did tell them is, okay, you guys are looking for more in the 550, 575 range. Let me ask you, do you have to have two bedrooms or would a two, uh, would you, have to, do you have to have two bathrooms or does a two bedroom, one bathroom work for you? And they're like, oh, that would work for us as well. Well, perfect. They just told me that they wanted to buy in the city of Ontario or somewhere close to it. And I let them know I have a new listing that's going to be hitting the market in the city of Ontario. And it's going to be listed for 560. I mean, that could be an ideal fit. So what I did is I followed up with them and look at her response. Thank you so much, John. It was a pleasure meeting you as well. I think we might schedule a consultation with you. I never signed anything with a realtor that we were trying to work with in the past. So I don't think it would be a problem. Now, what I did is you can see the blue line on the bottom. I followed up with a message immediately after that. And I ended up calling the client. The client was super enthused that I called them. I sent them over some additional video resources for them to review, which is pretty much a video overview of the steps involved in buying a home. Now, in my video message that I just shared with you a few seconds ago, I say my team and I leveraged the latest in digital technology, social media, and video marketing in order to improve the overall buying and selling experience for each and every one of my clients. I don't just say it, I mean it. So now I send them some video resources so that way they can become more familiar with the process. So. This right here is now going to create an opportunity for us, for us to assist this client when it comes to the purchase of their home. And of course, they're gonna need financing as well. Now, here's another one. This is a gentleman that showed up yesterday. This is the guy that said, I love this home. I love the lot size, but I need an extra bedroom. So I'm going back and forth with him because I am prepared. Remember I told you, be prepared. I'm looking at what my competition's like. I'm looking at other homes that are in the area. And I know for a fact that there's a property that hit the market two days after mine for $21,000 less on a similar lot with an extra bedroom, a little bit of a bigger home. And I know that one's also a fixer. So I had told them, maybe I can get you guys to see this home. My open house was ending at four. Look at this text. Hi, Pedro. I'm scheduled to showing for you today at four at the home on, on Amber Court. Are you okay with that? He says, yes, we will be there. Excellent. Hey, we got here a bit early. Is it okay for us to wait a bit? No rush. Thank you. I'll be wrapping up here at my open house in the next couple of minutes. I'll meet you at the property. That's how close I am. It's a home on the same street, right? Crazy. I'm on a call. I sent them a Yelp link for elite group home inspections. I sent them a site to my website so they can apply for the loan. And our conversation cycle started at 1.05 p.m. You guys could see that at the top. We spoke at 3.54 and at 6.28 and look at it, 8.01, 8.01. Hey, John, we just sent you all of our documents. I got a full file for this client. Not only did we get a full file, they love the property. We're writing an offer on the competing home today. And so now that is a real estate agent that I will tell you. I called, I texted, I didn't get a response. And that actually favors us. I even told my client, if a realtor is a little bit difficult to get a hold of, that actually makes it better for us. Because if it's difficult for me to get a hold of them and I'm calling and I'm texting, I could only imagine it's going to be more difficult for other people. So let's move on this now. Let's not sit idle. If you like it, let's put it under contract. Then you can do your homework and make sure that uh, you like it. Okay. So I wanted to give you the heads up on that. Now, let me show you one other one. I met this other couple again yesterday. Yesterday's open house was fire. So I held another, uh, I had another couple walk in. And this is a couple that uh, first time home buyers, she's a CPA. I'm having a conversation with them. And as I'm trying to work to say, I'd love to write the offer for you on this property. She's telling me, she says, oh, you know what? We had an offer submitted on another property in the city of Chino, but unfortunately we didn't get it. So that tells me right there, that they're already in the capacity of working with another agent, right? I learned that just by way of information that's being divulged. But what she said was, the problem with our agent is that I just really wish that they would be a bit more aggressive. And she's like, I really like your style. And I'm like, well, I like yours too. So, you know, we're going back and forth and we're having this conversation. So then I tell them, listen, who you work with matters in this business. I'll tell you, it matters. 
And so what I sent is I sent a text and the videos that you're looking at, these are client testimonials. And the video with the family on the bottom, that's one of my clients saying that when we came out and looked at this home, there were 17 offers on this home. I don't know what John and his team did, but John got our offer accepted, even though there was 17 other offers, which is a super cool testimonial because it's one thing for us to talk about how great we are. It's another thing for our clients to talk about how great we are. So if you guys now look, I said, Mackenzie and Victor, it was such a pleasure to connect with the two of you today. Do you have any interest in our property in Amber Court? If you do, it'd be fantastic. But if you don't, I'd still love the opportunity to earn you as a client. And then I say to them, here are a couple of client testimonials that highlight some of the key things that we do in, in, to help our clients buy real estate in today's aggressive market. And then look at her message. Hi, John, it was a pleasure meeting you. We love the property and want us to submit an offer. Let's do it. I'll call you in a few minutes, just wrapping up at my open house. She sends me her pre-approval letter. And guys, who you work with on financing matters big time. So I look at this pre-approval. The first thing that I look at is that they qualified her for conventional financing. And I said, did the, buy, did the lender that you spoke to, did they even compare FHA pricing in comparison to conventional financing? She's like, no. And I said, okay, a lot of clients were doing conventional financing when the rates were lower, but now that the rates are higher, being that you're putting less than 20% down on the property, I would strongly consider that you compare because I'm pretty sure that FHA pricing, even with PMI and all that, it's going to save you considerably a, a considerable amount of money on a per month basis. And that was a way that I was able to hook her and saying like, oh my gosh, yes, please. We don't know. We're first time home buyers. So this is another opportunity right here to not just double end the transaction. And if any of you guys have seen me in, in speak in events previously, you will often hear about me talking about the fact that we rep a lot of the buyers for the properties that we sell. And it's because we're not sitting there idle on our hands. My title rep, Phil Yagiri, uh, stopped by my open house yesterday and he hung out with me for like an hour because he's a good friend of mine and we we're just sitting there chopping it up. And he even asked me, he just said, uh, he said, it blows me away. The things that you teach are the very things that you do. You don't just teach it. Like I'm watching you get the commitment from these people. Like This is amazing. And I told him, we got to remember what business that we're in. We're in the real estate business. This is amongst one of the most competitive industries out there. And I know when I went and worked the open house with Joe as well, that was one of the key things that I thought is that, man, if we were just able to be more strategic and on top of it with, with these people, we could book more appointments. And that's exactly what we did at the open house with Joe.